Hey guys, Thomas Aarons here. Welcome back to Aarons Bassin. Today we're talking fluke fishing. And this is a prime time for going after smallmouth on the river. This is the picturesque kayak time. To get out there on the river, the flow rate is very low, the water clarity is very clear. This is a fantastic time to target, you know, smallmouth. What bait though, if you had to pick one, would you use? For me, it's the fluke. I for my college career, I have made a lot of top tens with my brother in, in college tournaments fishing a hard jerk bait. And its brother, the soft, doesn't get the love that it deserves. And there's one specific reason that I love fishing in jerk baits, and whether it's soft or hard, and that's the draw factor. You might not catch them with it, but you, they will show themselves. It's a tell. And so if you have limited time on the water, having a bait that not only that can catch them and be very effective, but also can show them. So you can go through an area. I didn't hook any, but I saw six of them. I know this is a very important area. So I can come back with something else and really soak it. So it gives me ability to find fish quickly and determine the proper technique to execute if this one is just not working. And that's, that goes true whether it's hard or the soft. So why the soft versus the hard? With our river systems, the flow is extremely low. It's really shallow. And that really makes it very snaggy. And that's where this soft one comes in. You can fish this on the grass, the grass mats that we have on the rivers. You can fish this under trees. You can skip it under overhanging brush. You can fish it a lot of places that is very dicey to throw the hard version, but yet you have the drawing power. And that's what I love so much about the jerk bait. The one tip I'll give you though, is people like to go with the bigger brother, the five inch jerk bait. I think that's a mistake when you begin at first for the day, okay? And here's why. A lot of our rivers have, they have fantastic smallmouth, but they don't necessarily have a mass quantity of those three and four pound ones. And this, this five is fantastic and you'll catch small ones on it, don't get me wrong. But the junior, you're gonna catch any predatory fish that swims in that river, period, bar none. And so that's why I like to start with this smaller one first because I'm going to get more bites. Then I'm gonna to go to the bigger one. So what I'll first do is I'm gonna work through an area to see if there's anything around. I'm gonna hit with this small one first, and then I'm gonna to rotate to the bigger one here, okay? But the nice thing when dealing with smallmouth is you're gonna still get bit on the small one. So now, how, how am I gonna throw that thing? So the, the boring old way is I want you to get a EWG style hook, and an EWG style hook has this very wide bend there, and you're gonna go with a one aught or a three aught. So if you were gonna fish the baby, the junior, you're gonna go with that one aught, okay? And you're gonna thread it on there. If you're gonna go with a three aught for that bigger five inch one, that'll work too, but you can also get away with that one. And then you're gonna hook it just like that, right through there. It's a little bit bigger hook, but it has the bite. The other nice thing about going with a little bit bigger hook, if you can, with that little junior, is you're going to get more depth. So that's way number one. Way number two, I like to rig this thing, is nose hook. You can use a you can use a screw lock, or what I like to do, and what I've had success with, is just nose hooking it too. But that or a screw lock, screw, a screw lock, sorry. And again, I'm going to list all this stuff in the item description for you. Colors. I prefer, basically, I always, I just have two. I have pearl white, and I have green pumpkin. And I will get green pumpkin in the smaller one if I can find it, or I will actually color it myself. There's also a, a dark pearl minnow, but I literally just lost my last one when I was fishing today. Um, but you can get the dark pearl in either color. The white is extremely good with drawing the fish out, or when it's really overcast. I will go with that pearl one. It has better drawing power. If it's sunny, really clear water, I'm gonna go with that green pumpkin version of it. Now let's talk tackle. Generally speaking, when I'm fishing the rivers, a lot of times I'm not just in my boat, but I'm also either wading or I'm using my kayak. And so I like to go with a spinning rod setup. The rod setup I usually like to go, I go with a Phoenix, uh, medium, medium heavy with an extra fast tip. And I'm gonna go with braid. I'm gonna go with 12 pound braid, usually sunline braid to a fluorocarbon leader. I like 
eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Usually that's all that I need. The lighter the setup that you have, the more depth you're gonna get out of that fluke. So if I go down to eight, let's say, I'm gonna get more depth than if I wanna crank up to 16. Always keep that in mind. If you wanna keep that bait higher in the column with a slow retrieve, increase the size of your leader material. And sometimes if you want, go to fluor, go to monofilament, I'm sorry, versus fluorocarbon, because that'll actually help with that. The other thing you can do is you wanna get more depth, of course, is go down to like eight. Technique wise, what I'm gonna do with this thing is just your standard pause, 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 whack, 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 pause, whack, whack, whack with that rod tip. And you can adjust it up or down. The other variant you can do with this, if they are short striking it, you can go with a treble hook, okay? You can use a pop rivet technique, and we're gonna have another video about that specifically, where you thread a treble hook through the bait. That's a last resort for me, and here's why. You will kill a lot of smallmouth with it. Um, I, I used to fish that with a swim bait, a pop rivet. The problem with that, when you thread that treble hook in there, is you're gonna get more of those swipers. The problem is, is when they inhale it, it is very hard to get that hook out. It's possible, but you're gonna kill some fish. And so I am terrified of doing that and actually hurting a trophy sized smallmouth in our lakes and rivers, because it, it's just, it's hard for them to get that size here. What you can do, and I strongly suggest, is you go to the treble hook and you get rid of the barbs. Pinch all the barbs in on it. That way, if they get it deeper, it's easier for you to get the hook out. Also keep a can of soda in the boat or the kayak so you can pour that down the throat if it is bleeding, it'll help coagulate the blood. Will you get more, will you get more hookups with it? Absolutely, it's a good technique and we're gonna do a video on that specifically uh, later. But just be careful because you will get more hooks but you run the chance of actually hurting the fish. And in our, in our places, I just, you don't wanna damage uh, a fish of a lifetime. You want it to be able to stay out there. Um, so guys, I really hope that helped. Go with that smaller fluke first, try that, use those bright color like a pearl white, and then if you feel like you're around them, adjust to that little bit bigger one. Really hope that helped. Have fun, be safe in the water. Thanks.